Okay, so there's several players that I was looking forward to seeing how they'll play in the preseason. Most of them were rookies, but one of them was a second-year player who just happens to be playing in his first year this year since he was hurt all of his rookie year. And that's going to be a player, and I'm actually confused about his name. I've heard people both call it Darius Juice and Darius Geis. I'm not exactly sure which one it is. I'll call him Juice for this video. That's the one I've heard more frequently, but I have definitely heard people call it Geis too. And, you know, not just random people, but like people who are respected reporters. So it's times like this that as a YouTuber, I just get confused and I'm not exactly sure what name to call him. So I'll call him Juice throughout this video and then that's what I'll do. But yeah, I mean, I was definitely looking forward to seeing how he'll play once he gets to the NFL. And so let's just jump into how he did. The first play I want to talk about is this one, where the way it's going to work for Washington is they'll have their left tackle go out and block that interior lineman right there, and then what they're going to do is actually double team the Falcons edge rusher with their two tight ends who are on the bottom half of the screen. From there, they can pull two players over to the bottom half of the screen to lead block for Juice who will be running underneath him, and that's the way this play is supposed to work. And one thing that's interesting from this play from Juice is he'll kind of have to hesitate a second. He doesn't run right away, he waits a second, and there's a reason for that. He's letting his players get into position, which they now are. You know, as you see, 75 there can easily make a block on his intended defender. But the hesitation part of that play was really perfect for Juice. He waited the exact time that you want to wait on a play like that. If he got up to his top speed right away, that definitely would not be a good thing because he could actually outrun his offensive lineman and there would be no lead blockers for him. But of course, if you go too slowly, that can allow another Falcon who's on the top half of the screen get free and tackle you. So that part of the play, really well done in my opinion because now he can get up to his top speed. However, one problem is actually going to happen. While you see that yes, it does appear that 75 is in a good position to be able to make this block, he is going to miss this block. It would have probably been an easy first down had that not happened, but now there's trouble basically right at the line of scrimmage. So, you know, very good play by that Atlanta defender, but also, you gotta make your blocks on that one. So then, now, what do I always say? A running back's job is to pick up more yards than your offensive line gives you. That's what a good running back does. A serviceable running back gives you as many yards as your offensive line gives you. And of course, a bad running back doesn't give you as many yards as your offensive line gives you. So for Juice, this is not a situation where he has to try to pick up more yards than his offensive line has given him. So is he going to be able to get around this tackle potentially, or at least pick up a few more yards? Well, yes he does. He gets a great stiff arm, and then turns it upfield, and picks up still a decent game. That was Brandon Sheriff, their right guard, who, in fairness, he's definitely much more of a better pass blocker than run blocker. So yes, he missed that block. He's better in the passing game, but anyways. You gotta give credit to Juice on that play, and you gotta like what you see from Juice on that play, that he can get around the tackle. I mean, that's definitely huge. The difference between a second down and nine and second down and four is definitely a big difference, so you know, give him credit for that play. There was also this play I like from Juice, where the way it's going to work is they're going to have their right tackle and also a tight end who's on the bottom half of the screen, double team an Atlanta Falcons defensive lineman right over there, and they're also pulled a tight end who's going to be blocking that Falcon right over there. And so for Washington, the way this is going to work is they're actually going to have the handoff to the top half of the screen, but then Juice will go over to the bottom half of the screen and try to get free in that direction. Kind of similar to that last play, where he doesn't want to start off getting to his top speed just right away, he kind of wants to let the play develop and then get to his top speed. And as you see, it's going to work out pretty well. I mean, he definitely takes his time getting the ball, but now he's getting ready to get up to his top speed and try to pick up as many yards as possible. However, there is going to be one problem. There's going to be an Atlanta defender who's essentially just right where Juice would want to run the ball to. So this is definitely a rough situation for Washington right now. It looked like somebody just mixed up their blocking assignment and just somehow a linebacker got completely free. So, you know, frustrating, but it does happen. That is kind of football. It's a sloppy sport. Things go wrong. That's the way the sport works. So you might be thinking, okay, well then what's my crazy play I'm going to show now? Is he going to stiff arm him or is he going to jump over him, make a hurdle, you know, make some great juke move? Well, no. He's just going to cut back to the inside and just pick up a couple extra yards and then that's the end of the play. Not really a spectacular play at all there. You only pick up three yards. I mean, that is far from a highlight real play by any means. But in my opinion, I like that play from Juice. If he tries to get too fancy there, they're probably only gaining one yard or so. He said, you know what? We got three yards. Okay, I'll take the three yards. Let's go on to second down. There's a very real chance that if he bounces to the outside, they don't pick up any yards. Or maybe they lose some yards. You know, maybe they gain some more yards too if he can break a tackle. But it's oftentimes not worth the risk. Especially because breaking a tackle often takes some time. So that allows other defenders to get into the area. Sometimes it might be worth it however you do have to pick your battles and i feel like juice kind of he's he's picking his battles on that play he's saying you know what I'll take the three yards, let's move on to second down, and I like that from him. The reality of the situation is, at this point, being a running back, basically the whole running game in general is just to make the passing game easier. That's why you run the ball, to make the passing game either, to open things up in the passing game, and especially in play action. And so just sort of guaranteeing some positive gains, that's kind of what you want to see, you know? As the old expression goes, you can't go broke making a profit. And that works for running backs too, not just quarterbacks. There's also this one, which again, it's not a highlight real play, but I liked it from him. And the key thing you're going to want to watch here is that both the set 
center and the right guard are going to be pulling over to the bottom half of the screen to lead block for Juice. Now some of you might be saying once you see this play is that shouldn't he also go slow on this play? You know it's very similar to that first play I showed you. Don't you want to take your time in getting up to your top speed? But on this one no. Mostly because if you notice there will be two lead blockers in the area. However there's more than two Atlanta Falcons defenders who are also going to be in that area. So this is kind of a foot race situation. You want to get up to the bottom half of the screen pretty quickly so just get to your top speed quickly. And also you have a center and guard getting over there and you know you're in a shotgun here so you have more room to run. It won't be as difficult as if the left guard was trying to get over to the bottom half of the screen or something. You know they have less room to run here. And so he is going to get to his top speed quickly and as you see right now he kind of gets in between his two offensive linemen but there's another Falcon who is in the area. Honestly if I'm Case Keenum on this play I might not have even had this run to the bottom half of the screen. I might have audibled and have it be a run to the top half of the screen or just to something else entirely. Just simply because Atlanta's in the zone here and you have all of your receivers on the top half of the screen. So that's personally what I would have done but either way. If you notice right here, okay, so this is the situation. This is what you knew it was going to happen once the ball was snapped, is now Juice has a defensive back right in his face, and he has to just try to pick up as many yards as possible. And so again, is he going to go for a truck? Is he going to try to stiff arm him? No, he just falls forward, but notice how he does fall forward. I mean, falling forward is definitely key in the NFL, and you pick up a few yards in that play, even though on paper it appeared it wasn't going to be a great play to run, really. Again, really, that's what being a running back is, is just finding a way to pick up those extra two yards on the play, you know? It doesn't seem like a lot just on one play, but it really does add up over the course of a game. You know, if you take 20 carries and average 4 yards per carry, well then that's pretty good. That'd be 80 yards. That's a pretty good performance. But if you're able to pick up an extra 2 yards just from being able to fall forward and things like that, well now you have 120 yards over that performance. So that's a lot better of a game. But anyways, you saw his acceleration on the last play to a degree, but I think this play will actually show it in a little bit of a better way. It's definitely something I was looking forward to seeing how will his acceleration translate to the NFL, and I thought it did. Like, what's going to happen here is that the left tackle and left guard will both be having one-on-one -on -one matchups against those two Falcons who are in that area, and then Juice will basically just try to run in between them. That's the way this play is supposed to work. Juice could also run to the outside of the tackle on this play, but he's going to choose to run inside the tackle and in between the tackle and the guard. And as you see, once this ball is snapped, I mean, he is going to have to wait a second just for his offensive lineman to try to create some space for him. The line did their job on this one, so give him credit, but you know, he did have to wait for them to do their job, so now he's basically at a stop right here. He has very little momentum going forward, so now he's going to have to try to get back up to his top speed as quickly as he possibly can. But that's going to be exactly what he does. He is able to run up and pick up a good gain on that one. It was good blocking in front of him for sure, but I thought his acceleration was definitely shown off on that play. It's like, okay, this guy can get to top speed pretty quickly. Okay, good. It's again one of those situations that it's like, we all thought he was going to be that way coming out of college, but it's nice to see that he actually can be this way and he can be this good. Anyways, there's also this play where the way it's going to work is there's going to be two double teams on this play. Both the Falcons edge rusher and a Falcons interior lineman will both be getting double teamed at the start of this play. From that point, the Redskins can have their left guard and left tackle both get off those blocks and try to move up the block linebackers right over there. It's a good play to try to create a hole and then still have Redskins in the area who can make a block, and it's going to work out okay. I mean, Juice now has the ball, and if you see, it's really that Redskin trying to face that Falcon is kind of the key matchup here. I mean, it's a tough block to make just because you are going up against a linebacker, and obviously linebackers are going to have better footwork than an offensive lineman. Just, you would think that would be the case at least. But you know who has better footwork than a linebacker more often than not? Well, that would be a running back. So watch what Juice is going to do here. He's going to kind of juke out that linebacker, but seven yards away with an offensive lineman also in between them. That allows him to actually get by that linebacker. It was a different Falcon who brought him down on that one. So, you know, that's a really good play from Juice in my opinion. Really it is, it's all about just stretching these plays out. It's all about turning 3 yard gains into 5 yard gains, and 5 yard gains into 7 yard gains. There is no such thing as a running back who can do it all. It's all about stretching these plays out, and I thought in that preseason game against Atlanta, that's exactly what Juice did. We'll see how it translates once it gets to the regular season, but I was definitely impressed from Juice there. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much what I thought of his running game. I'll also show a couple plays from him running routes. This one was actually a negative. This was probably my biggest negative of the night from Juice. The way it's going to work at first, it's going to be play action, and it's going to run out to the bottom half of the screen after they fake the handoff. So nothing too fancy. But one thing you'll notice after the ball is snapped and the play develops is if you look at Juice right here, he's going to kind of just hang out for a second. Keenum's first options weren't really on the board this time, and you know, Juice is in check down duty here, so his job is to try to get open and try to just be able to pick up a few yards. That's his job here. 
But for Keenum, if you look at him, he's under pressure. So, you know, Juice is kind of saying, oh man, you know, this play's over. Oh well, I tried. He's still staying where he's at because he thinks there's a chance Keenum could make this throw. However, I don't think he necessarily should have done that. If you notice at the bottom half of the screen, there could be a huge gap for Juice to potentially make a catch if he ran over there. And especially because Atlanta Falcons defender in that area is actually going to run over to the bottom half of the screen. Of course, Juice doesn't know that at the time, but it is a possibility that could happen. And just if he ran through the bottom half of the screen, he's then at least taking that Falcon out of the area and then allowing Keenum to have more time to scramble around in the pocket. But instead, he's going to kind of run closer to the top half of the screen and then get over to the bottom half of the screen. But by the time he finally realized what he should do to try to get open, then Keenum had nowhere to throw the ball to. Again, that's not a bad thing as much as it is he just didn't go above and beyond on that play. You know, this is kind of scramble drill at this point, but I would have liked to see a running back who realized, oh, hey, in this scramble drill, I see that there's a huge gap right in front of me. I should run in that direction. It's tough to do because, again, when you're watching it on TV, you can see everything in a 360 direction, whereas in the game, you'll have to turn your head eight different directions before, you know, finding where you should go. But again, that's what separates the good players from the great players, so I'm going to point it out. But as a whole, I was very impressed with Juice, and I even thought that he had some good route running. Like, take a look at this one. He's running a flat route, and so it's pretty simple, but in a third down and four, this could actually be pretty key. It's not just a check down on this play, it's a route that Keenum is definitely going to look to throw the ball to if he feels like his receiver is open, and Juice is going to get pretty open on this play. But watch how he does it. He's going to get to that top speed so quickly, and he turns his head around very quickly as well. That's a good play in my opinion. I mean, he's in position as of right now to make this catch and still turn up field and pick up the first down. Maybe not a guaranteed first down, but definitely a high chance of it being a first down. And Keenum is going to decide to make this throw and try to see if they can get the first down. Granted, Keenum just misses the throw. You know, it happens, but he did miss the throw, so we couldn't really see if Juice would have been able to get the first down, but I have to think he probably would have. So yeah, I was definitely impressed from Juice. I thought he played pretty well out there. So I'd be interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Let me know what you think of Juice's performance. And as always, thanks for watching.